Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vulcan's European Outlook. It is monthly Outlook Day, and in the past few days, I actually said that I was going to be doing um, an update on uh, uh, on La Nina's progress and uh, the prospects of tropical activity during the month of June in the Atlantic. But uh, I've changed my mind. We're going to look at the June Outlook, which is now freely available on martinweather.com. There is a link in the description below today's video for that. And we will look at the uh, La Nina latest versus, uh, you know, the, the eastward progress of the Manjula North Station, how that may ramp up tropical activity in the Atlantic as we go through the month of June. That will be in tomorrow's video. And then on Sunday, Global Weather Report um, 94th edition. So let's get right into it. This is the June Outlook issued literally just a couple of minutes ago on the website and uh, we will first and foremost look briefly back at the month of may it's hard to believe it's june tomorrow isn't it so seemingly never ending warm wet theme continued through the month of may for the uk ireland and western europe persistent blocking across the north has led to north south divide in uk rainfall distribution with a relatively wet um south and relatively dry north and northwest especially to the north of the central belt actually i know there's folks out there that are, are going to dismiss this record warm may prospect but they hear me out and this is just purely information based on the met office this is not me saying this i know there's been parts of the uk that hasn't seen a particularly warm may it's not been a particularly sunny may for example either but basically I, in the article i say that with relatively sustained warm than average days and very warm nights through at least the 20th of the month, May 2024 is on track to be the warmest on record. It's the consistency in mild, cloudy overnight temperatures that is probably the main culprit behind the record, likely record warm May because it hasn't been actually officiated uh, just yet by the Met Office, but it looks very, very likely that it's going to be a record. Certainly up until the 20th, it, especially across Scotland, it was a very, very warm May. It's changed in the last 10 days, it's turned cooler and wetter, and that has been the case across the majority. Uh, the firmly south displaced jet stream, as we've seen so much uh, in recent months, has somewhat of a, a semi-permanent feature during May has led to a cool, wet Iberia and very unsettled Central and Southern Europe. It's been a notably cool May for much of Ukraine and European Russia, as you can see in the uh, temperature normally chart for Europe in front here. So I'm just blowing this up just a little bit um, to show you a little bit clearer, hopefully. So obviously it's been a busy time here at Marathon Weather um, on YouTube uh, and also the website as well. Summer forecast was issued in the live stream back last Sunday. Now we've got the June outlook. Plenty of reason to stick around here on the channel. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. It's obviously been a very mild spring overall as well. This is the 90-day temperature anomaly for Europe. And the UK joins the rest of the continent with a warmer than average uh, overall temperature profile. It's been quite a wet May and spring over much of Central and Southern Europe, at least Piedmont region has seen its wettest spring in 70 years. Remember last May was the uh, wettest May in 70 years. Large scale, low pressure trapped underneath that block to the north has led to flash flooding or flood events stretching from Spain and France across to Poland and the Balkan region. While unusual warmth has been dominant for much of the last two weeks, across much of Scandinavia under the influence of that strong block. May is likely to be one of the warmest for Scandinavia as well as the UK, helped by the fact that we've seen some rather anomalous late season uh, heat across parts of uh, Norway, Sweden and Finland. We've had temperatures as high as 31 Celsius in recent days and even across the uh, Arctic Norway, well to the north of the Arctic Circle, temperatures yesterday was at 28 Celsius which is pretty crazy stuff, actually, when you think about it. Um, so you can see this. Like I say, it's, it's freely available. There is a link in the description below, so you can read through this uh, at your leisure here. While through the, the 20th of the month, it's been warm for the UK, especially by night. A dry north, wet south made May slightly drier than average 
as a whole. That's up until the 20th of the month, although what recent heavy rains has likely, and I say likely, this is based on my own assumption, likely pushed the month into wetter than average territory following a long-term trend, which has been the case for months now. It's been a cool, wet May for much of Spain and Portugal, away from the drought-stricken east, but the month is ending with the first 40s of the year. May 30th, like I said, so quite the extreme heat top and tail Europe with 28 in the Arctic Norway, uh, while El Grando uh, recorded uh, a 41.2 Celsius. So these are the, the, the highs yesterday. Look at the, the cool pocket, UK, Ireland, uh, France, and into the central portion of Europe. It's really eastern and southwestern, as well as northern uh, portions of the continent. It, it's it's generally warm across the majority of the continent, with the exceptions of of uh, the near continent in the UK, and you can see these are the Spanish maximums for yesterday. Looks as if uh, for England and Wales anyway, 2024 has been the wettest opening to a year since 1931. That's according to Dan Harris of the Met Office here. So that's through the first five months of the year. So here we go. How is June going to pan out? Cool, dry first half, warmer, wetter second half. That is the question. June and meteorological summer kicks off tomorrow uh, with the MJO quickly rotating out of phases four and five and into phases six, seven, and possibly going to end up in phases eight or one. These are the phases associated with blocking. So in other words, the North Atlantic Oscillation, Arctic Oscillation. Now the NAO is heading for potentially as deepest negative since April. What does that mean? Now I've obviously been hinting at that in recent times before we get there most models suggest that a weekly negative north atlantic oscillation for june is likely before heading positive into july and august and there's a little bit more on this in the summer forecast also the link is, is in the description below so you can see here the month of june with the exceptions of a couple of models shows a weak negative nao signal for the month overall and as as you can see in the graphic there it's it's dipping quite significantly here and we'll we'll give you the reasons in just a second why the arctic oscillation is also trending negative too which would help slow down the entire ridge trough pattern throughout the northern hemisphere so it essentially slows down the e the west to east progress of weather uh, and weather systems so you can see here the slight uh, negative signal here of the arctic oscillation in terms of at least the first half of the month so obviously calling for one thing at the start, it's it's a big thing to suggest that that pattern would linger right the way through till the end of the month. So we're going to talk initially about the first half of the month and get through that first and then we'll deal with the second half in a second here. But basically there's good model agreement that an Atlantic Ridge edges in over the UK and Ireland as we step into the weekend and obviously the first weekend of June and meteorological summer however as quick as that builds in it looks as if it's going to actually go back out again and towards the north atlantic and greenland here so let me read through this here in terms of at least the first half of the month there's a good moral agreement that atlantic ridge edges in over the uk and ireland for the first weekend of summer but then retrogrades west northwest allowing a trough to the north of low pressure to dive south from the Norwegian Sea. Now, this has been highlighted in recent days on the channel here throughout the course of the week. A cool, showery northerly flow looks likely between weeks one and two. And this is the this is the, the CFSV2 weeklies for the upcoming seven-day period. So you see the trough here over the heart of Europe. There's that ridge kind of nosing in over the UK and Ireland, settling things down. A little bit of unsettled weather over the southeast of the con uh, over the, the UK in the next, you know, through the course of today and into tomorrow, but then that eases and we should see a fairly decent day on Saturday. Bit of a flip in reversal here. Saturday looks decent across the majority of the UK, but then on Sunday it turns cloudier with some outbreaks of rain across the north. This is day 8 through 10 of the CFSV2 weeklies. Now you notice here that we've lost that high. It's then shifted west and northwest, allowing a trough to start to drop south out of Scandinavia and in over the heart of Europe, including the UK and Ireland. This is the temperature anomalies here. 
So you notice here that even over the course of the weekend, no great shakes in terms of warmth. Yeah, we might scrape 24, 25 across the south on Sunday. But generally speaking, temperatures are close to average through the course of the weekend. And then obviously, if we start to pull in northerly winds next week, temperatures are going to come down. You notice here that we've got low countries, France and uh, central and southern Germany below average for week one. This is the day 8 through 14. So this is in the next week. Firmly below average in terms of temperature anomalies here. In terms of rainfall, not an awful lot to speak about. Shari rain coming in from the north, convective showers at that. Not a particularly wet source. Yeah, you're going to get showers, but uh, nothing to write home about. So a drier than average signal week one and week two as well. So it looks as if we're getting through at least the first half of the month on a fairly dry note. The question becomes, if this setup evolves as expected, because remember, there is still an if that we're talking about next week, which is still a wee while away. How quickly could it change? There is likely to be a battle between UK trough and Iberia Ridge. What wins? The trough could get further south or the ridge may manage to push further north. That's talking about next week as the northerly winds come down. How much of an influence does that ridge over Spain and Portugal have on, say, the southern UK? Or does it allow more of a southward discharge of the cool northerly flow. One would expect the trough to weaken and ridge to strengthen as we enter week three and four. And so I expect warmer, but potentially wetter times during the second half of the month. This is the CFSV2 for week three. So this is the period 13th through the 20th. And then as we go towards the 20th and 27th of June, you can see here, this is the upper air chart. Rainfall wise, still looking reasonably dry. So therefore, you would expect even if the final week of June is wetter than average, the month is going to turn out to be probably drier than average, believe it or not. But then how much rain do you get in the final week? If we do get that, you know, you can get a massive amount of rain in a short space of time at this time of the year when there's a lot more heat and more heat holds more moisture, for example. So, you know, stranger things have happened. You can get a dry 20 days of the month and then the final 10 is a washout and then it actually tips the month overall. That's exactly what was seen essentially in the month of May, especially for the north of the UK. I think it's turned out wetter. But you can see here the temperature normally is warmer than average week three and then week four here. But there's a big question mark over that final uh, 10 days or so of the month. Uh, you know, we could still see the negative NAO signal linger. We may still see more trough as opposed to region over the UK. That may allow a below average month temperature wise. So this is the, uh, the upper chart here. This is the hemispheric view. And you can see that uh, this is for the month of June overall. So we've got that high over the, the North Atlantic here. Trough not that far to the north of the UK here. Uh, but the question mark is how much influence does heights stronger heights further south have on the southern UK. So this is the temperature anomalies. Not a particularly warm looking June, colder than average across the north, slightly warmer than average across the south, and take your pick in between average conditions. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Wetter than average across the northwest perhaps, but the majority of the UK looks drier than average. So the overall verdict, average to below average temperatures for the UK um, and Ireland here. Warmer and drier across Iberia and probably France, but wetter across Central Europe. So there you go, folks. The first month of meteorological summer and the June outlook is suggesting a below average temperature and rainfall for the UK. So average to below average, both in terms of temperature and rainfall. That's it for today. Be sure to hit that like, share and subscribe and I will be back all being well tomorrow with a look at La Nina. Bye for now.